The New York Knicks picked up a 97 to 92 victory in game four over the Philadelphia 76ers. This was one that seemed like was going to get away from the Knicks early on, but at the same time, we've seen this before. The Knicks get down in the first quarter and they find a way to get it done. Down 10 after the first, the second quarter, the Knicks win that by eight. They win the third by three. They win the fourth by four. The biggest takeaway from this game is the obvious. Jalen Brunson, to me, put up the best playoff game in Knicks franchise history. He goes out there as 47 points, 10 assists, 18 of 34 from the field, 9 of 11 from the free throw line, 2 of 8 from 3. Brunson put this team on his back. He hit just ridiculous shot after ridiculous shot. We know that Brunson in the first two games was struggling. The Sixers were definitely putting a lot of contact on him, making it difficult. There was a lot of fouls that weren't called, but Brunson said the heck with that. In game three, goes out there and balls out. Game four was even better. Cannot stress it enough. Jalen Brunson is the best free agent signing in Knicks history, if not maybe even the best free agent signing in the history of basketball. I mean, the Knicks were dead in the water. They looked like, not going to say they weren't going in any sort of direction because they had a good young core. They had, of course, Coach Thibodeau. The future looked bright, but Brunson came in and he took the Knicks from a team that was a playing at best to a team that can legit make some noise. And now the Knicks look like as much of a championship contender as anyone in the East. But outside of Brunson, he wasn't just the story of this game. Precious Achua played 20 minutes. If you guys watched my preview against the Sixers before the series started, I said that we weren't going to see much of Precious Achua, if any at all. Mitchell Robinson did not play in this game. Isaiah Hartenstein had five fouls in the third quarter, which meant that Achua had to check in and play, of course, that you know entire fourth. He had to play the end of the third, and man, did he step up. It doesn't exactly show fully in the box score, seven rebounds, four of them offensive, four blocks. I guess it does, but Achua, it's funny because those numbers are just insane in 20 minutes. He was a plus 11, but he just was all over the place, man. Blocking and beat from three, giving the Knicks second chance points, setting screens. Achua, this was as good as I've seen him the entire season. There was a stretch this year where Achua was legit dominating. And then, of course, he started to fall off a little bit. The matchups weren't in his favor. But in this game, Achua was just unbelievable. I mean, Brunson was a plus 10. Look at his impact. Well, Achua was a plus 11. So it just goes to show how big he was. And then decided to go with Josh Hart as the third guy in the thumbnail. 0 of 7 from the field, 4 points. Hart missed two free throws consecutively at the end of this game, which could have doomed the Knicks. But he had 17 rebounds and five assists. Hart, the Knicks do not win this game without him. Hart was as important as anyone else that I've talked about in this video because he gives the Knicks second chances. He makes it tough on a defense because you know that Hart's flying around. Not to mention that Hart is attacking the basket and whether or not he gets fouled or another player gets an offensive rebound. I mean, Hart was great in this game. This was the first time in the series through four games that Hart's shot was off, but he was still able to contribute in other ways. And remember, the Knicks gave up Cam Reddish, who wasn't even in the rotation, in a first round pick. I don't even remember exactly who the Blazers drafted with that pick, but it really wouldn't even matter. I mean, that trade was so good. Remember the Knicks when they used to sign old you know, overpaid players and they would make some stupid trades and now the Knicks are just going out there they're building through the draft and okay let's go get Hart let's sign Brunson let's, let's sign Randall and let's trade for OG like the moves they're making have they're just night and day compared to the old Knicks man it's just crazy it's sitting in this seat right now and seeing the Knicks with a 3-1 series lead and have a superstar player and and uh, man it's just things are going the Knicks way we saw back in game two where of course the Knicks get a steal and then Dante hits a game winning three Mike Green on the call with a double bang just the things like that just never went the Knicks way I mean I've been a Knicks fan my entire life and I've been through the worst of the worst I've seen the Knicks win 17 games I've seen the Knicks fall short to the Pacers and and it goes on and on man and wow I mean it's just awesome to see Boyan Bogdanovich played one minute and ended up getting injured. I don't know if we'll see him the rest of the series, if I'm being honest with you guys. I mean, don't hold me to that. I'm just guessing. But he also does have ligament damage in his left wrist, and he might need surgery in the offseason. So the Knicks just aren't catching a break. But Miles McBride, I thought, was fantastic. 27 minutes, plus 8, 13 points, 3 of 5 from 3, 4 of 7 from the field. We know defensively that he's done a good job this series. Maxi has definitely had his number, but, I mean, Maxi is just so quick. But Maxi, this game was 8 of 21. I didn't, he didn't shoot the ball well last game as well, so... A lot of that has to be contributed to Miles McBride, but you know, Isaiah Hartenstein, 28 minutes, 8 points, 4 boards, 2 assists. Uh, it's just crazy because Hartenstein, honestly, 
was having a good game. I mean, he was a minus four, but just for a Chua to step in, I thought we were going to be in serious trouble. But Embiid, you look in the fourth quarter, I don't even think he had a field goal. I, I legitimately don't even think Embiid had a field goal in the fourth quarter, just free throw. So, I mean, just credit to Achua and, and really the Knicks in general for their gameplay. They made it tough in him. And you can see that Embiid is, he did have that monster dunk in, what was that game? Was that game one? Series is flying by. He had that monster alley-oop dunk. And that was it, though. Like, MB legitimately did not dunk the basketball. He had a wide open mid range when the Sixers were down five late in this fourth quarter, and he decided to go to the basket to try to get to, get to the line or maybe get an A1, and he didn't make it. So um, you can see Embiid's not fully healthy, but at the same time, the Knicks are without an all NBA player in Julius Randle. Boyan got injured. He's already playing through an injury, and it's just crazy. But for the Knicks, they've got to finish off this series in New York in game five. I get that. Okay, you're up three to one. You've got some leeway. But the Knicks, they've got to close this out for a many reasons obviously you want to end the series as quickly as possible but it's also to get some extra rest if the knicks can get this done finish it off in a gentleman's sweep it's going to give everyone some rest and i'm not saying the knicks need rest because i mean josh hart 46 minutes brunson 44 minutes og 47 minutes but it's just why not right the next round is going to get more difficult whether that be cleveland or whether it be orlando the knicks did struggle against the magic this season and in terms of cleveland i mean the knicks played them last playoffs and I don't see why it would be any different, but after that, I mean, you're looking at Boston, Indiana, and then, you know, potentially, you know, getting way ahead of myself at the NBA championship, you know, Denver, uh, Minnesota, you know, Oklahoma. I mean, it's just, it's only going to get more difficult each round and for the Knicks to finish off this series would be great. The, the weird thing is that Dante DiVincenzo didn't shoot the ball well last game. In this game, he didn't shoot it well either. He did make two straight threes, which was huge. Eight points, two of seven from three, three of 11. Coach Tibbs decided to go with McBride. And to me, I don't hate the decision. The Knicks won the game. Like, it would be ridiculous for me to say that he should have went with Dante. But I do think that moving forward, you know, Dante definitely getting him out there late in the game is going to be huge because, you know, there was a three in the corner that McBride did airball, but at the same time, he was three of five. I'm just kind of nitpicking, but I like McBride's defense and his energy. It's just Dante, of course man, is he such a great shooter? And it'll be interesting to see how the Knicks decide ultimately to, to go with who finishes off games. But, you know, McBride Devo played, you know, essentially the same amount of minutes, 20, 27. That's a good problem to have is like you have two such good players that you don't even know who to go with and they end up being McBride. He was a plus eight. Dante was a minus seven. So clearly the right decision. I mean, Tibbs is, man, he's one of the best coaches in the league. He's won two coach of the year awards. He probably should have won it this year. The Knicks were the two seed. They won 50 games despite being without Randall and OG and, and Mitch for a extended amount of time. I mean, but hey, you know, awards, yeah, they're cool and all, but the Knicks are focused on winning a championship. The Knicks are focused on winning this series. And I'm super happy. The last game the Knicks didn't get, but I mean, Philadelphia was 31 and eight with Joel Embiid in the lineup. So to be up three to one against a team, again, that was 31 and eight with Embiid in the lineup, speaks about this team. And man, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but Julius Randle is not even on the court. Julius Randle was having an unbelievable season. Yeah, I mean, Randle was given 24 and about nine boards and 47 from the field. Like, Randle was having a fantastic season. The Knicks truly looked like the best team in the NBA right before him and OG got injured. And yeah, I'm just so happy with this team. I'm so happy that you guys tuned into the end of this video. Knicks Daily. I remember when I made this channel, the Knicks were, I think, the 12th seed in the East. They didn't have Jalen Brunson at the time. Everyone just showed a lot of love and support. And yeah. I mean, it's been a long ride, but if we can go out there and win a championship, I'd be the, the happiest person in the world, man. I mean, I've been waiting my entire life for this.